Welcome to The Truth You Need. I'm Andrew, your host, and today I'd like to show you how I am preparing a fallout shelter for my family. Now, I realize that many people are in complete denial about the possibility of nuclear war. Then there are those who acknowledge that it may very well take place, but they have decided that it would be better to die rather than live in a post-nuclear world. If you're in that group, then I'm begging you, just make sure you do two things. First, make sure you have repented and placed your faith in the Jesus of the Bible for your salvation. After all, it would be awful beyond comprehension to die a horribly slow death from radiation sickness and then end up in hell, which is eternity apart from God. If you want to learn more about God's plan of salvation, then navigate over to our special website, thetruthyouneed.com. There you can download a free book that will explain salvation and a lot more of what the truth is behind the accelerating deterioration we see all around us. The other thing you need to do is to ask yourself how you will deal with a slow, painful process of dying from radiation poisoning. You see, a large number of people will actually survive the initial attacks. The distance between them and ground zero will be great enough that the heat and blast will not kill them instantly. Depending on a multitude of factors, most people will receive a deadly dose of radiation that will kill them over days or weeks. When I thought about this reality, I decided on a different plan. The shelter I decided to build was a variation on several designs that the government provided plans for back in the 1950s for a basement fallout shelter. Now, many people don't have a basement, so this design isn't a viable option for them. If you're in this situation, then I suggest you consider moving your home to a place with a basement or make plans to evacuate to a friend's home or property that is at least 25 miles from a probable target. This would include major cities, military bases, and major transportation, energy, and information centers. Here's a picture of the basement room I chose to build the shelter in. The first thing we had to do is to clean out all the clutter. Then we drew out the floor plan and the list of materials we had to have. This included a couple different types of concrete blocks, two by sixes, and sheets of half inch plywood. We designed the shelter for six people to live in for about two weeks. It could go substantially longer than that. This is a picture of the uh, finished interior. And as you can see, there are uh, places near the bottom where uh, the blocks are open to let additional air in. Here's a scene after we placed the bunk beds in. These are called disc beds. They're extremely strong, and we actually have three. The table you see can be taken, can be set up during the day for cards and games uh, that can help pass the time. But then during the night, uh, that table is taken down and another bunk bed is assembled. The other thing that you really have to plan for is water. This is, you know, you, you can't last long without water. So we put in a 250 gallon vertical water tank with a hose that can be brought into the shelter's doorway. And speaking of the doorway, we designed it so that it would be at 90 degrees, which will cut down on radiation, yet still provide for ventilation, along with some openings that I showed you at the bottom of the shelter. Now, this design presupposes a couple of important factors. 
You need to be far enough from a likely, likely target area so that your home will not be damaged from the initial blast because any openings will allow wind to blow in fallout particles. We are preparing uh, plywood covers that will go over the windows and then dirt to cover the basement windows in the house. And if time allows, that is, uh, if, if hostilities don't break out here uh, very soon, which that is possible, we will prepare covers for the other windows in the upper stories of the home as well. We also have a small pantry that we keep in the shelter for bread, crackers, and other non-perishable foods. And keep in mind that because of the limited movement inside the shelter, the number of calories needed for two weeks is really minimal. Each person is also allowed a small storage box, which will go underneath the beds uh, to store personal items like their own personal water container, toothbrush, wet wipes, fresh undergarments, flashlight, books to read, and you get the general idea. There is a toilet in an adjoining room, and as a backup, in case we run out of water to flush the toilet, we have a camping toilet, which we will use with a mixture of sawdust and chips to store the waste until we can go outside. Electricity will be provided by a, store, a, by a storage bank of batteries, which are protected against the effects of electromagnetic pulse by a device called EMP shield. You can get these for your car, for your home, for solar units, uh, for just about anywhere. And believe me, they're a great investment. So in closing, just remember, get prepared for eternity first. That's the highest priority. None of this will matter at all uh, if you don't take care of the eternity factor. Then decide on what you will do when you hear news reports that Moscow and other major cities are being evacuated. Thank you for joining with us today. Please like and subscribe if you would like to learn more about how to prepare for this life and the life to come. And by the way, I hope none of this is ever necessary, but it's increasingly starting to look like we are being pushed towards a nuclear confrontation. I love you guys. See you soon.